What's going on, everybody? So, it's very rare that I talk about any type of dream that I had. Um, but every now and then, I have a dream, and it's it's almost repetitive. Um, it'll stick through my head during the day. Um, I'll remember it more as I'm awake. And I had a dream about a week ago, and I'm not sure if this is a godly message, if this is for something that's about to happen, something that's going to happen in the future. Um, I don't know if it's symbolism. I really don't know, but there's something weighing on my heart saying I'm supposed to be sharing this dream with the world. Now, the other night, it was probably five, six days ago, I woke up in an absolute panic. I had only been sleeping for about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. Um, I gotta tell you, this dream scared the heck out of me. Um, so we're gonna start this dream at the beginning. I was literally standing in a room. Um, it was almost like an office or a meeting room or something, but it was an octagon style of room. So it, it looked like an octagon in the room. But it was a beautiful room, but the colors were dull. Uh, but the room itself was absolutely beautiful. There was a being standing in front of me. I do not know if this was the devil. I do not know if this was Satan. I don't know if it was one of its demons. I don't know if it was... I, I don't know what it was, but it was very um, devilish, I guess you could call it. The more I think about it, the more descriptive his image is in my hand. And if you've seen the movie Legend from the 1980s, it almost looks like Tim Curry's depiction of that satanic being. Um, but it was creepier. Um, there's no other way for me to describe it. Uh, his horns, they were not straight. They were crooked. There were... It almost went... Nyeh, nyeh, nyeh. Like it was... It was weird. It, it just, it was creepy, but he was muscular, he was big, um, he was, I remember he was a very dark red, but he had so many shades of red, and he just said, go ahead and try to escape, I'll give you a head start. So he did, and I ran. I only remember one doorway in this room, and I remember running out of that room, and it seemed like I was in some type of a college, or maybe a very comfortable hospital. I, I don't know what kind of room it was, but the, the hospital was, I'm going to say it was a hospital. Um, it was very clean, but it was more like an office building, like a medical office hospital bunch of doctor's officers or something. And I remember going through, zigzagging through rooms and trying to escape, and I could literally feel his breath on my neck. Um, I could not see him. I turned around multiple times, could not see him. But I remember the feeling of heat. I mean, hotter than I had ever felt on my neck. And I remember the hospital it started getting dark, um, like in the building. Not like horror movie, lights flickering or anything, just... Little by little, it just started getting dark. So I'm running through this building, and I came to a doorway where there were two doors, but both the doors were locked. Well, above the doors, there were these... Uh, if you remember old school buildings, a lot of old Kathleen stuff have them. They have the window on top of the door that can open up. Um, so the building had that. Now, the doors were eight feet tall, like easily eight feet high. And this window that was above it was probably about three to four feet high, okay, and probably six feet long. Very odd thing. No construction in history have I ever seen a building that looks like this. But I remember I somehow leapt up over the doorway onto that, and there was a screen, and a knife appeared out of nowhere, this gorgeous, white-bladed, beautiful knife. I mean, the blade was white, the handle was white, I mean, it was crisp. And there was a screen on this window, and somehow I leapt onto the windowsill, which, it was a windowsill. And my huge body somehow laid on this windowsill. And I took this knife and just whoosh, straight through the screen, and I went to the other side, and I somehow escaped. Um, a couple, man, couple minutes later into the dream, I was now outside of this building. 
and now it looked like a college campus slash mall. Um, couldn't see any stores, but that's how I describe it. It was a huge parking lot. The building was in the middle. The parking lot surrounded the whole building. But there was a highway or a roadway or something. And I remember ducking in and out of moving cars trying to find my car. And I finally found my car. And as I got to my car door, the being was behind me. And he just said, gotcha. And I woke up. And I woke up in a super, I mean, cold sweat. I mean, this this was, this was freaky. I wasn't even warm. But I could not catch my breath. Um, I got up and my wife was like, are you okay? And I'm like, no, I felt nauseous. Um, it was terrible. It was terrifying. I could not get back to sleep. Um, I apologize about the wind sound in the video. Um, my fan was on. My bad. Anyway, it's time for the real message here. Um, not only do I believe that dreams can be some kind of uh, touch with the next level, uh, because this world is this big and the next level is uncomprehendable. Um, this very well may be a message from God saying it's time to open up your Bibles and get into my word, folks. There are way too many people that are not being saved. There's way too many people that we are literally tossing aside and we believe that we are saved just because we believe in the name of Jesus Christ. Well, guess what? The Bible says that even those that proclaim the name of Jesus Christ aren't necessarily going to heaven. So it is our job, it's our objective, it's our mission to get out there and save people who need to be saved. Because I'll guarantee you, every single person that sees this video has either a family member, friend, co-worker, colleague, whatever you want to call them, that is not saved. That's our mission. There is a lot going on in this world right now, from riots to defunding police to the coronavirus to big bugs. I mean, there, there's all sorts of stuff going on. There's the election coming up in America here in November, a couple months away. There's a lot going on right now. It's time for us to start acting properly. It's time for us to do our job as Christians, which is to spread the word of God. If your Bible is just sitting on a shelf and you never open it, it's time to open it. It's time to read those words. It's time to actually soak in those words. If you don't understand what the Bible is saying, go to church. Find someone in a church who can help explain the Bible to you. Better yet, go on to platforms like this, YouTube, and start researching what you're thinking. Research what you're reading. Go on the internet and start looking for breakdowns of what the Bible is saying. There's something weird going on. Because for the last two to three months, every time I open up my Bible, it's always to... It's random places because that's how I like reading the Bible. I've read it so many times, front to back and back to front, that I just like opening it at random places. And like I've said in movie, it's like I've said multiple times, it's like watching a movie. The more you read it, the more you see it, the more stuff you realize has been in front of your face this whole time and you didn't even know it. But something weird has been happening for the last few months. Every single time I open up my Bible, it's some kind of prophecy for the book of Revelation, for the end of times. I opened up Daniel, um, I think it was Daniel 8 today. Maybe it was Daniel 15. Anyway, I remember it was somewhere in Daniel 8, and it was all about the big horns and the little horns coming to rise of power. I mean, seriously, every time I open this book, it's more and more things happening for the future, for the end time events. So God is clearly sending messages in some way, shape, or form to people all over the world because people are posting videos, people are writing blogs, people are doing all sorts of stuff. Churches are talking about the book of Revelation more and more and more and more and prophecies that are to come in the end times. It is our job to be spreading this word because not only is your soul on the line, other people's souls are on the line as well. It is your job, it is your duty to spread the word. And the only way to spread it is to stop being cowardice about it. Many times in this world, I see opportunities all the time to talk to people about Christ. 
to talk to people about the Bible, and I don't do it. Because I know their views. I don't want to be that person anymore. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to shove the Bible down your throat. I'm not saying I'm going to shove down prophecy down your throat or anything like that. But I'm going to start bringing it up more often in conversation, especially if you're not a Christian, because I know it makes you uncomfortable. And Christianity is not a comfortable thing. It's just not. Open up your Bibles, folks, and start praying, because time is coming near. I don't know if it's going to be in our lifetime or not. I don't know if it's going to be, as some people are predicting, as a thousand years from now, in the year 3300. I don't know. I am not God. I do not have that answer. But Jesus did tell you that signs will be given, and there have been signs all around us. And we all know that a human's lifespan is literally a blink of the eye in God. So, just because he's showing us signs right now does not mean it's going to happen in our lifetime or my children's lifetime. It could be generations from now. But it is starting, and the signs are everywhere. God bless.